Hi, welcome to episode four of Robbie Burns and Friends. Last episode, I spoke with Courtney Starr about the recent Apple event and all the new announcements they made. Before that discussion, we had uh, another discussion about our reflections using the Apple Watch for the past five or six months. Enough of a conversation that it almost makes up an entire podcast episode in its length. So what I thought I would do is cut that all out and make this next episode sort of a B-side to last week's episode. Keep in mind, since that discussion, Apple has released an all-new operating system for the Apple Watch, but I feel like the context of the discussion was surrounding more or less how the watch is fitting into our lifestyle and less, you know, the specifics of the software. I hope you enjoy. I am always, I think this is like, I'm really curious how you use your computer with regards to this. I, I leave all of my devices on silence with no vibrate and then I, all of my mobile devices and then I leave my Mac on do not disturb mode like 99% of the time I'm using it. I'm almost exactly the same. <clears throat> Sorry, the watch, I, I have haptic feedback on the Apple Watch and that is the only way I can be notified of something. Yeah, that's how I do it and I'm so glad that I never have to hear a vibration or sound like basically ever again. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, I use my laptop to put a keynote in front of my class and like I don't want my stuff. You know, that would be dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's in do not disturb mode. I even have like a little I use crash plane to to set up my computer so that a couple of things happen when I get on my school's Wi-Fi network and one of which is do not disturb mode. Nice. Um Yeah, it's great. It's great not being disturbed. <laughs> I would agree. Yeah, I uh I actually have pretty strong feelings about the default settings about of the Apple Watch. Um, I'll get to those in a second, but usually the way I, the thing I tell people about the Apple Watch is I get increasingly more value out of the Apple Watch the more things I remove and turn off. So that the only things that I have on there and the only things I get notified about are things that I can essentially act on or that are like completely valuable. So I don't have like any apps on my Apple Watch, and I, the only notifications I get are like text messages, calendar alerts, and then like I love the fitness stuff, but the only thing I want to know about fitness is stand alerts and if I have like beaten uh, some sort of goal. So like I've done, I've met my move goal 100 times. Like, I don't want to know that I met my move goal for today and my stand goal for today and my exercise goal for today. Like, the only thing I want is the stand goal for, like, everyday notifications. You know, I leave that one on, too, but I always meet the stand goal. Really? See, I actually think that one is a little bit harder for me. Um, well, you sit in front of a computer all day. I mean, like, teaching is the most mobile job I can imagine. Yeah, it's definitely not. Um, I mean, our office is pretty, people get up and move around and, and do stuff a lot, but there are still times when the stand goal will actually help me get up. Or there'll be times when, at the end of the day, I have, like, perfectly met the stand goal. Like, if I miss one hour, I wouldn't have met it at that point. Yeah, I, the only day I've not met the stand goal since I bought the watch is the two days we were driving to Georgia last weekend. Oh, wow. It's, it's pretty easy. In fact, I usually surpass the 12-hour stand goal that I think is default on the watch. Yeah. It's kind of I, crazy. I'll tell you, living in New York, you get some pretty crazy days, and it's really fun to, uh, to like, see how many steps you do. Because you walk everywhere in New York. So we'll have days. I think my highest one so far is, like, 25,000 steps. And that was just, like, a day with family, you know, just, like, walking around and then going on a run and walking our dog, and it's kind of crazy to see that. That's, yeah, I, I think I've only ever had a number that high when I was at Disney World. Nice. Walking around for over 12 hours. Yeah. Um, well, but I do hit 10,000 almost every day just from teaching. Yeah. I still hit that too just from mostly running and walking our dog. Yeah. It's that green circle, that activity one that uh, requires some <laughs> extra motivation for me. See that? I, the only one I have a hard time really hitting every day is the, uh, is the move goal. Huh. I don't hit it every day, but I come pretty close without trying too hard. Nice. Um, yeah, so you don't keep any watches installed on your Apple Watch? 
the, let me see. Any apps, mean? What did I say? Watches. Any watches installed? You don't keep any watches installed on your Apple Watch? Yeah, apps. I have some. Let me see. But they're, I, all, they're all garbage. I have one password, and that is it, and I've never used it. I did use it once, and it was okay. <laughs> Let me tell you what I have. I recently purged, but I do have the following apps. Okay. Oh, it is actually kind of a long list. I've got the Apple Store. Um, I've got... Automatic, which is an app for mm-hmm. your car. And that just remind, tells me where I'm parked. Nice. Um, I've got a widget to control the Philips Hue lights in the house. I have OmniFocus. I have the Keynote app, remote app. Um, this one I actually use. I have an AeroPress timer. Oh, nice. Um, I have, I, yeah, I've got Evernote. And then I have a bunch of the a bunch of messenger apps installed because they actually I'm not 100% sure if this is because I have the app installed on the watch or if it's just be a native feature to to the iPhone but I think that some of them give me richer notifications on the watch having them installed. Gotcha. Like I'm pretty sure that this is not a messenger app but I'm pretty sure that dark sky notifications on the Apple Watch are different with the app installed than they are without hmm. well, because the the good. ios notifications are like just it's raining you know now it's going to rain but on the apple watch i get like a graph of the next hour hmm. with like blue little like little blue bars of you know demonstrating how much rain is going to be happening every minute of the next hour that's cool yeah it's pretty awesome um and then this spire app <laughs> is really cool like it came you know i downloaded the app but when you launch it 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 shows you like what kind of, you know, it's sort of the whole concept behind Spire is that it's it's measuring, it's using your breathing to tell you what kind of mental state you're in. Mm-hmm. So you can be either calm, which is like slow and steady breathing, focused, which is elevated but consistent breathing, um, tense, which is very erratic breathing. Or active, which is, I believe it, it means you're moving, you're on the go. It's got a pedometer too. Hmm. And then it just shows you like, what is your, like right now I'm in a calm streak and have hmm. been for five minutes and 40 seconds. That's cool. So wait, do you have to have the hardware for this? Yeah, you do. So okay. it's, the Spire is just, it's like a little <laughs> pebble looking th- stub thing that just clips onto the inside of your belt. So you bought that? I bought it. The, the cool thing about it is that it's pretty non-obtrusive. Like, I, I really hate, honestly, having, like, 60 million little gadgets. Mm-hmm. I, I really don't like it. Like, it's very stressful to me to manage them all. But it is just a little tiny stub that you put on your belt and then forget about. And then it, it's just, you know, it measures your breathing. You can actually see your breathing on the phone, on the screen of your iPhone with, with the app. Like, wow. It shows, like, you this graph of your breathing pulsing as you inhale and exhale. Wow. And this was recommended because one of the things that uh, I'm doing with my physical therapist and be- cognitive behavioral therapist is <clears throat> trying to ma- basically like manage stress, but in a way that where stress management is happening in little bite-sized pieces of mental and physical focus in the middle of the day. Hmm. Like, in, in, in other words, it's, it's, not, it's non-negotiable to like wait until the end of the day and find a couple minutes of calm to focus like it has to be in the middle of the day and that is honestly really difficult to do like to find 10 minutes to like sit in silence or like practice slow breathing or do like a stretch or a muscle exercise like that it's really you know easy to forget but spire is like measuring your type of mental state and if your breathing becomes erratic it can like push a notification to your apple watch that says you need to take 10 seconds and take like deep breaths. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So it's kind of like a little coach. Hmm. Very cool. So so yeah, that's a, to me, that's a cool Apple watch app. I mean, I think I'll probably use them a little bit more once this new watch OS, what when watch OS two comes out. Cause my hope is that they're going to load way faster. Yeah. That's that's what everybody's hoping. So you, you, maybe you, you probably, this is a, a good way to, I guess, talk a little bit of Apple stuff. So at the Apple event this past week, they talked a little bit about the watch. Um, With watch OS 2, I'm curious, 
do you know that if someone has developed an app for the for the existing watch kit how difficult is it for them to update that watch so that it runs natively for watch os2 like is there a way to take like if they're using the standard apis that apple has made available is it a lot of steps to rework your app so that it can run natively on the watch or is that like is it like starting over no, it's, it's definitely not like starting over. So I think most people will do that. So I can expect that a lot of the, the apps I've tried on the Apple Watch, that number one, developers are likely to have them up to date with the new native SDK early on. And then two, that they're probably going to look and feel the same. They're just going to run faster. Correct. Okay. That was my, kind of my hope. Mm-hmm. Well, and then there's stuff that, you know, I, I, I'm really just as much excited about the, the, being able to, the apps being able to take control over things like the digital crown and like the haptic feedback and, you know, the, I don't leave the sound on, but that the sound, you know, like one of the, to me, when I think about what are, what are the killer watch apps? Like what is an app that is, that is designed for a watch or that would be perfect on a watch more than it would be on a phone or a tablet? Mm-hmm. And to me, a metronome is a great example. Yeah, I know you've been kind of begging for that for a while. And so there are some that exist, but they're just like controllers for the phone app counterparts. Mm. Um, like I've got one called Metronome Pro on my iPhone, and the Apple Watch app loads really slow, which is kind of defeats the purpose of having it on the on the watch. And then you can only spl- hit play and pause, and then it just basically starts beeping from your phone, like click. Click, click, <laughs> click. And that's kind of not what I was going for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, to me, first of all, it would be amazing to be able to scroll up and down on the crown to change the tempo. Mm, that would be and, nice. And then if I could just get a silent metronome that uses the haptic feedback. So basically, yeah, was... like, speed, haptic feedback without sound, and then, like, digital crown to control input. Like, that is, to me, the perfect... Like, there's not a better product that... a metronome app could be designed for that would be very cool now so as you know when you're playing a percussion instrument though do you think you would be able to feel the haptic feedback no i would use it to like just ref for reference more so like i wouldn't leave it on and then play to it i would just use it to like get a get a a tempo in my head like i'm actually seeing myself using this you know, in in class, just to get quick references, but mostly like when I'm conducting and mm-hmm. I'm, you know, it's really con- common, you know, to get some nerves when you're performing. And mm-hmm. when I'm about to conduct my, my students, you know, I want to have the most consistent and controlled tempo because they're already nervous when they're performing live and, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to be wanting to rush things. So I, I want to make sure that my tempo is really solid and there's, you know, it's really tacky to have a little clicking metronome on stage. So with, uh, you know, with Apple watch, I can imagine myself just discreetly tapping a couple of buttons and just feeling a couple of measures of a steady pulse and then hitting the pause button and then be beginning the piece. That would be amazing. That seems kind of like the perfect glance too, you know, like really, quickly just swipe up a glance and then start something would be really cool. Yeah, it's too bad that the glances are not able to do anything other than launch the app. But it seems like maybe the metronome app would, you know, you could program it to start simply by starting the app. You know what I mean? So it's like you could just swipe up, tap the glance, and then just by opening the app it begins. Yeah, that's true. And I wonder if they're going to open that up because obviously... um, you know, the, one of the glances that I use most often is the like the music glance, and that one's obviously actionable. So that would be ideal is if you could have something almost like a podcast thing where you could like speed up or slow down, and start and stop. Yeah, that's got to be that's got to be coming down the road. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, what glances do you have on your watch? Very few. Uh, let's see here. Starting, should I start on the right or the left? Oh. Right being most important. Oh, really? Mine are left most important. Ooh, interesting. Cool. Well, I'll start on the left just okay. because. So All left, right. I have the settings, uh-huh. um, which I don't even necessarily know why I have that. I keep it on there for the rare chance that I would use that little 
find my iPhone dingy thing. Yeah, that's great. Then I have the heart rate, which I don't use a ton, but I typically use it to demo the watch. So <laughs> I keep I keep the heart rate one there. And, to, and there's actually no other way to get your heart rate on there unless you start a workout. So I like to keep that one there. And actually it did come in handy. The other day I had some had a really weird experience where um, I just got like super lightheaded all of a sudden and I was able to check my heart rate like immediately which was actually really cool um, so I have heart rate then I have battery then I have music then I have calendar and that's it hmm so I took off battery because I was never running out of battery yeah um, I have music is all the way is so my yeah my left most is settings uh, then music then I have dark sky. Oh no, sorry. I switched. I switched to carrot weather. Nice. Which I I, I don't really. I mean, it's got like the, their whole shtick is that it's got like snarky comments. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like ooh, sucks to be you. It's raining. But I actually think even though dark sky is kind of like the go-to rain app as far as design is concerned, I think that um, carrot weather has better looking widgets for both the apple watch glance and the iphone they have a a widget for the today view Hmm. and they just look they just i don't know to me like it whatever kind of animation doesn't isn't overdone but also gives me the the information the quickest like it's just colorful in the right way like it's it's very easy to look at this and really quickly know that for the next 15 minutes it's going to be raining heavily outside Mm-hmm. And then it's going to calm down for the rest of the hour. Uh, then I have the Fantastical calendar widget. Nice. Which just, again, it just looks nice and has a really, it just really does a good job of showing you a whole, the whole, your whole day by using color and shape. Uh, and then I have the Swarm glance, and that's because we were traveling last weekend. Mm-hmm. And I like to check in places on Foursquare when I'm traveling. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, what, watch fa- what watch face do you use? Ooh, I was uh, I was debated for a while. I kept switching around until I found the right one. Um, so I like utility, and I have in the top left I have weather. Top right I have the fitness rings, and then the bottom I have the timer. Ah, interesting. Okay, so I use utility on the weekends. Um, I like the look of it better, and I have. Fitness rings, weather, and calendar, next calendar events on display as well. And then, but during the weekday, I have the modular watch face, which shows me my next calendar event really big in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then I have all those same complications, except for that I have also a timer. Yeah, the timer. See, I used to have the, uh, the calendar <clears throat> on the bottom, like you do on utility. But I found it wasn't quite enough information because usually one of the most important things I want to know for my next calendar event is is where it is, like which room. Right. Um, and also, I use the timer for so many things. So that one was just used way more. I kind of wish uh, I was going back and forth. I used the chronograph for a while because I like how it gives you four complications. Um, but the thing was, was I never used that stopwatch. And I actually, uh, it was kind of annoying. I cross my arms a lot, I guess, and I wear like almost nothing but t-shirts. So I would always cross my arms and accidentally start the timer. And then like at critical moments, I would look at the time and be like really confused because it's like going quickly. And I'm like, what time is this? And then I would realize it's the timer. And that was happening all the time. Like I was starting the timer, you know, almost every day. And so um, I switched back to utility because I'm sure I'm still tapping that one top right complication but since it's a uh, activity once i put my wrist back down it just defaults to going back to the watch face so I, I don't ever see that that happened right so you leave that default setting to give you the watch face every time you put up your arm correct so see i i really love how when you're watching apple tv it defaults to showing you the apple tv remote when you're mm-hmm. like, it knows when you're watching Apple TV and it changes that setting just for the Apple mm-hmm. TV app so that when you put your wrist up, you have pause and playback controls instantly. That's nice. But for some reason, it doesn't do that with the Keynote app. 
And I really like using the Keynote app on my watch in class because I've been using Keynote a lot for my lesson planning. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I kind of have been toggling that setting off and on. Yeah, I, I thought about it, but more than, you know, just the huge majority of the time, I just want to know the time. Right. So do you, this is, uh, yeah, time, timers and alarms are super useful, especially in the classroom. Um, I found that managing alarms on the Apple Watch is a little cumbersome, though. Even though I do like, I really like when I have one set, and I'm, sometimes I'll use the alarm complication so that I can see both the time and when my next alarm is going off. Hmm. It's really useful for, like, ending classes on time. I have to let my classes out three minutes earlier than the bell because we have to pack up. Gotcha. So it's kind of nice to see when does this class actually end and also like, what is it now? So do you think this is like my, I've been really wanting to ask you this for a long time. Do you, what do you think about the two hardware buttons on the watch? I think, oi, the, uh, I mean, obviously the, the crown, I love the crown. I guess it's not obvious, but I love the crown. Um, I use it to scroll all the time. I, almost, I, I never touch the screen for actually scrolling through a list. I only touch the screen for like other gestures. Um, so one thing that's funny about that that I was actually like really worried about um, was I'm I'm a lefty, so I wear my watch on my right hand, and I was really worried that the watch was going to look really stupid with the uh, I wear it quote upside down so that the uh, the crown is like on the lower bottom left. Right. And I was really worried that was going to look like really doofy, but I actually have come to like highly prefer it being lower because it's easier to press it. Right. With a, Cause it's kind of natural to put your, put your thumb on the other side of the watch to kind of like brace it while you press it. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have that on the bottom cause you don't cover as much of the screen. It's kind of easier to reach. So anyways, I like the crown. Are I you like left handed. It I am indeed left-handed. So you're gonna, you're, so you're, then you're also touching it with your dominant thumb too, which I would imagine is more comfortable. Well, no, I'm touching it with my index finger because it's on the bottom. Like if you hold up your right wrist, it's on the left side of the watch. So my oh. left index finger um, is the one tapping the crown, but then the dominant thumb is on the right side of the screen. Yeah, that's that's that sounds very comfortable. It is. I actually really like it. Like I actually put it on the other way and didn't prefer it. And I've actually read some like people on Twitter. That were righties that actually just flip the flip the watch upside down, anyways. Yeah. On their uh, on the other hand. Oh um, yeah, but I've read the, that too. It's very compelling. Yeah, I think it's I think it makes a lot of sense actually, and it doesn't look weird. I, I was really worried it was going to look wrong, but I don't mind it at all. Yeah, I'm very I'm very disappointed in this button that only goes to a friend view that I never use. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a super lame button. It's a. Uh, I think it's really it's more comfortable though than pressing the crown. Partly because, because of what quickier? you're talking about about its location, being able to brace the the watch with your opposite mm -hmm. finger, but it's also just a feel a really good feeling button and I mm -hmm. kind of wish it was a Siri button instead of the the you know the 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 crown doubling as a button. Mhm. Mm or I wish it was, I really wish there was a button that just always took you back to the watch. Yeah, there's a, I remember, the, I think the best one, the best kind of like rethink of some of the architecture I've seen was actually um, from John Gruber, like a week after it came out. He kind of had this ridiculously exhaustive article about how he just wants to get back to the watch face faster. Um, I definitely agree. I, I find it's pretty annoying to always like have to, you know, tap on that little clock icon or like tap the tap the home button again. I think you have to hit the home button three times to get yeah, from another... Depending on where you are, yeah. Right. Yeah, if you're in another app, you have to hit it once to go to the app screen, another time to focus on the clock, and then another time to open the clock. When you also have to kind of time it perfectly because if you do it too fast, it's going to go to whatever the previous app was. Right. Which is annoying. Because if you're, you know, geeky watch people who like efficiency, you're trying to go fast, so then you double tap it and it goes to another app and you're like, duh. Right. Do you think this would be cumbersome? I actually kind of am ready already for there to be a multitask kind of screen on the watch. Like, I wish that double clicking 
the the crown instead of just being able to swap back and forth between the two most recently used apps i kind of just wish i could like swipe through to whatever app i you know like my fourth most recently used app Mm -hmm. i'm i'm ready i don't think it would be too cumbersome either i do find that desire sometimes but i guess because i don't use that many apps to begin with i don't typically have the the desire to like go back to something because i haven't used anything yeah um the other as far as you asked about the buttons the yeah, the friends button i really i don't mind that it goes to the friends when i'm just like putzing around because i do use it a lot maybe not a lot but i use it to uh to like dictate messages um you don't just say hey, hey siri text my wife Sometimes, like, if I'm in a situation where saying, hey, Siri, would be awkward, I'll just do that. And it's it actually is pretty quick. And I don't know, the hey, Siri thing is, I actually use that a lot when I'm when I'm by myself. But I will sometimes have to do that, like, two or three times sometimes. And it's kind of annoying. And it's kind of nice to just directly know you can go right to, um, like, you know, every day when I'm coming home from work, I always just tap on that, tap on my wife, and then say, on my way. Because I have that as, like, one of the little automatic messages so that's kind of nice to be able to get to that really quickly. I've actually utilized the, um, I forget what they call them, but the canned messages. I typed in a few of them that I typically use, and I use them quite frequently now. Yeah, I use that, I use that a little bit. I, I find that I say, yeah, explanation point more often than yes or sure. Yeah, um, I say, like, sounds good. That's, like, the way I talk. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I find myself... A, using Siri to just tell it who I want to text, because if I'm going to talk to my watch in public or not, I might as well add the, you know, the, hey, dictate this to this person. Mm -hmm. I'm already going to have to dictate the content of the message to them, so I might as well say the whole thing. Um, But then I also, with regards to like, hey Siri working, yeah, it's like 50% for me, Mm -hmm. which is really frustrating because it's awesome when it works. Like I was washing dishes this morning, and I just sort of turned my wrist a little bit and said, "Hey, I was I was trying to I was trying to call AT and T to ask them a question about our service." And I just said, mm-hmm. "Hey Siri, where's the nearest AT and T?" And then I'm washing the dishes, and then it pulls up a map with the nearest AT and T. And then I just, you know, I then the number was on the screen. And then I said, "I actually I don't think I said it. I think I just like tapped with my nose the call button, <laughs> and I was wearing earbuds." And then I just started nice. Crying. That's amazing. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, that's really cool. So, so they, do you want to talk about this Apple event? Oh, nice. Well, I do, I, but I want to say one more thing about that side button. Yes. I really wish the side button functionality would change based on what I'm doing. Oh. So, like, the, the thing that it absolutely needs to be, like, if it's not this in a future generation, I'm confused, is it needs to be a start and stop for a workout. Oh, my gosh, yes. Because I'm running... I'm sweating, my hands are wet, I have my dog, I have her leash, which is always difficult to tap something on screen because she will pull, she will pull my hand and like mess up the gesture, and I'm stopping at a stoplight, so I want to stop it for maybe 10 seconds and start it again, and doing the force touch and like the resume is very annoying, um, and one thing I've noticed, this is actually kind of crazy to me, but if you're in a workout and you force touch to that screen where you get end workout and resume, and you accidentally hit end workout, there is no way to say, I didn't mean to do that. Huh. It's either save or discard the workout. There's no way to, to just say, well, whoops, uh, never mind. So yeah. I want to be able to do that without looking. You know what I mean? I just want to like hit a hardware button, watch the light, and then hit it again and start running. Yeah, that's frustrating. I also have to say, too, that it, even when you do intend it to be done, the fact that it makes you hit an extra button really bothers me. Like, of course I meant to save it. I'm not going to discard that. Like, you know what this is. I'm probably, I'm only working out because I get points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a little weird, the discard thing. I've only used discard, like, two times when I was demoing, demoing the, the, the workout app to somebody. And then I thought to myself, you know, what would, what would the harm be in, in, recording that data it would just be like a a nothing workout like does that matter you know what i mean yeah i think the idea of the button one of the two buttons changing is great and i have to say like 
I this is one of those few things or you know I had the the Pebble smartwatch before the Apple and it's all hardware buttons and it's really ugly looking and it's a very having a non-touch display is a very inflexible kind of way to operate mm -hmm. it but let me tell you man like when my music is playing I can find that pause play button without even moving my arm an inch closer to my face I just reach over it with my other hand and f fiddle around and then touch it yeah, and that's, having I like that. at least one kind of feature in each app that can be <clears throat> operated by a touch, you know, like a physical button would be very cool. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, kinda, yeah, sorry, go ahead. yeah, I was just going to say like, even if it was just, even if, if in some cases it was just a back button, like mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy to me that they, I understand that like iOS for, you know, like I've one of the, they, like they, you know, the, it, the back button is not a necessary thing in phone world you know you just upper left pretty much every app upper left corner of the display has a back button but on a watch like it's ridiculous how small mm -hmm. that little upper left corner button is to go back yeah it's pretty itty mm. yeah, yeah another thing i thought about too <clears throat> was it would be interesting to uh see now how you double tap the uh, i don't know what the, the buttons are called there's the crown and then what is it called the side button um, I don't know what, yeah, I don't know what the button is called. Me neither. I always get it confused. So the, like, I'll just call it the side button, um, the one that's not the crown. So you double tap that to make, uh, Apple Pay come up. I kind of wish it was the same thing. Like I double tap the crown to make the friends come up and then the side button is just something else. Yeah. I mean, the use case for, for friend, using the friend screen is definitely higher than using Apple Pay. But I, I don't still... know. <laughs> I've, used, I've used Apple Pay more in the past month than I've called up that friends list. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe uh, people are using it and I'm just crazy. I use it sometimes. But yeah, just the biggest thing I wish is it just adapted to the, what you were doing. Because if I'm, seriously, if I'm going to work out, I'm not texting somebody. You know what I mean? Like I probably don't even, I might not even have my phone. So why am I seeing a friend screen? I can't, I literally cannot do anything with the friend screen. So it shouldn't be that button. Yep. Anyways. Yeah, I'm curious where it goes. They've got to know that this is not the final. I don't know. It's it's really like the iPhone. When you look at the the first iPhone and how the software worked, mm -hmm. it's amazing how many things they got right the first time. Mm -hmm. um, so few of the you know the core metaphors it uses for how to like man, you know get around it is or have remained the same. Um, uh, it's kind of. Like, I don't think the watch is going to be the same way. Like, I think the buttons and the operating system are going to be navigated differently, even in the next two years. Like, it's going to be very different how we operate the watch. Yeah, I think some of the things will definitely remain, but I, I hope some of the things change. Um, I've seen some weird recommendations, too. Like, I think a lot of people, everyone seems to have ideas about what the home screen could look like, like with the app icons. I've seen some really weird ideas. I kind of actually like the little bubble view. Um, I don't think it's that bad, but there's just other little things that I would speed up if I could. Yeah, it's hard because it's really kind of a slippery view. Like I almost would rather, and sp especially because I keep so few apps installed on it, mm -hmm. I would almost rather it just be a four by, you know, like a two by two grid of four icons, just like the different pages of an iPhone. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's kind of like the... Um, what was it like the Nano, the iPod Nano? That's exactly what it looks like. Oh, the one that people turned into a watch by buying a rubber strap. Exactly that. I think it had four icons, four circular icons on it, and you swiped through the the um, like pages just like an iPhone. Yeah, I would. I don't think that's great either, but I would probably be able to use it a little more easily. Yeah. Uh, Apple Watch, but I do like it a lot. And I tell people, like, it's the be definitely the best fitness tracker on the market. Yeah, I've never, I've never done it. I'm, uh, for being someone who makes apps, I, I still think there's a big part of me that is on the, like, I don't like lots of gadgets scale. Um, in many ways, I would still call myself, like, a first um, adopter of something, but in some ways not. Um, and so until the Apple Watch, I never had anything with me when I worked out. I would wear I would wear a watch, but that was it. I would never have headphones. I would never take my phone with me, 
and I wasn't going to get the Apple Watch if it required the phone for a workout. So like, my, the nice thing is, is nothing physically has changed for me once I got the Apple Watch. It's like I'm still wearing a watch, but now I have the benefit of all of these cool fitness features. And I definitely, um, I don't necessarily need it to be motivated. Like I still, I was working out a lot before. I'm still working out just about the same. I'd say it does push me to be a little bit more active and like push a, you know, push my time while I'm running and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, but I would say it's definitely been a neat thing because I've never seen my pace. Or I've never seen, you know, exact distances. So it's kind of enlightening to get information about stuff that I've been doing for so long. Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Um, I, th I think like general, my general awareness has of health has definitely heightened since not even just using the watch. The watch just makes it easier to track certain things like workouts and, and heart rate, but definitely this Apple health app has helped me to really think about things like how much caffeine do I drink? How many calories do I eat a day? And then looking at that stuff side by side, like you can see if you look at the calorie graph next to the weight graph, it's crazy how in sync they move. Like <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Eating less calories sometimes influences weight. And of course, if you eat few calories, but you eat really bad food for you, it doesn't really work that way. But it tends to be that I'm not eating food that's incredibly bad for me. <laughs>